All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm not trying to get too crazy and too loud, but I'm not going to lie. This may be my favorite signing of all the free agency, man. I'm not going to lie. You know me, man. I had to go look at some film. We had to take a look at some stats, some pro football focus grades before I could officially start to record this video. But man, the Washington Commanders have signed safety Jeremy Chen. And it's hard to even call him a safety because he's so versatile. He could play so many places. I kind of just want to call him chess piece. But either way, the Washington Commanders have signed chess piece Jeremy Chen. Does that mean the Cameron Curl is as good as gone? Is this the Cameron Curl replacement? Also, we got to talk about his elite ceiling. We're going to go back to when he was coming out of the draft and how bad I wanted him then and how elite of an RAS score he has, his raw athletic profile, and why you could argue he at the very least has the highest ceiling of any player that we've signed in this free agency period so far. He has all pro talent all up inside of him. We just need to coach and develop it out of him. And what better to do that than Dan Quinn as your head coach, Joe Witt Jr. as your defensive coordinator, and Jason Simmons as your defensive passing game coordinator. This is crazy. So, of course, we got to talk about how Jeremy Chin fits into the commander's defense because we still already have a lot of young DBs that are also pretty versatile. Where does Jeremy Chin have the best potential to shine and get back to his former greatness? Also, are two former Panthers players the best Washington signings so far? It's making me question myself. I'm not going to lie. Also, is Washington a top free agency landing spot? Jeremy Chin had multiple offers from different teams. He decided to come play for us for potentially less money on top of that. We're going to dive into all of that and more. But before we do, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time we release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Right now, I'm just running on pure excitement about these signings right now. Eventually, I'm going to sit down, chill, and eat some few food, man. But it's just some one thing after another. I still got to break down the, the fact that we signed a long snapper. I told y'all I'm doing individual videos for every single person we sign. I mean, I may group in like a, a rumor with a guy, but I'm not going to talk about more than one signing in any video just combined, consolidated into one video because I feel like everybody deserves their own shine. And of course, I'm doing deep dives into all of these guys. So we're taking a look at stats. I'm watching film before I start these recordings and things like that. So I have my own opinion developed more so than just outside of what everybody else is saying on the internet. So these take time and I'm making sure I give everybody their own individual video. I really feel like they deserve it. So stay tuned because I'm keeping y'all updated on every little thing that the commanders have going on, whether it's a signing, whether it's just a rumor that we may be potentially interested in a certain player. And so far, None of the rumors that's come out have led to anything concrete for us. Any rumor that we've been attached to has not happened. And all of these signings, we weren't necessarily rumored to these guys. A few of them just made perfect sense, but there weren't any necessarily rumors that were coming out. So I love the fact that there are no leaks coming out of this organization as well. So far, no leaks. We're running this organization like a professional franchise should be ran. I love it. The commanders have so far signed the most free agents out of anybody in the NFL, man. What a time to be a commander fan man again i'm just super excited i'm trying to suppress it and control it so we can get very analytical with this breakdown let's go ahead and dive into it man stay tuned for all of the content let's get it All right, so apparently the Washington Commanders are signing, again, I would call him a chess piece in Jeremy Chin. This guy is different. In four seasons with the Panthers, he had four sacks, 12 tackles for losses, and two defensive touchdowns. Again, as like a safety, I guess, kind of hybrid linebacker, but the Panthers used him far more like a safety than I feel like they should have. We'll talk about that later when we get to his fits. And... The most important part is that not only did we sign Jeremy Chin, but we got him for a one-year deal worth up to $5.1 million. That's ridiculous. Imagine once we get the final contract details with the actual base salary guarantees and the actual cap hit is, because it's more than likely going to be even less than that. I'm guessing somewhere probably around like three or four million. And 
I have to be honest with y'all, this may be my favorite signing yet. It's between this one and the Frankie Louvu one at linebacker. And when I sit back and I started to think about it before I even started recording this video, I was thinking like, man, as tired as I was of Ron Rivera bringing over a bunch of former Carolina Panthers when he was here, it's crazy that probably my favorite two signings of this really good free agency class that we have so far are both former Panthers. I mean, it makes me feel stupid. I'm over here second guessing myself, like looking at my hands like, do I even know football anymore? Like, what am I doing on my end? As much as I hated Ron Rivera signing former Panthers, the fact that my favorite two signings so far in a very deep free agency class where I like literally every signing except for, I guess, Marcus Mariota. I feel like every signing has been a good signing. Even our long snapper signing, which I'm gonna get to after this video, was a really good signing in my opinion. For out of all of those guys, for my favorite two to be former Panthers, it is making me second guess myself a little bit. Like I'm looking at myself like, yo, Rico, are we losing it? Oh yeah. Did we lose our groove? Are we no longer good at watching football and analyzing football? I don't know. But of course, just like Frankie Louvu, there's no strong connection between Jeremy Chin and the Commanders. So that just shows that both of those guys just really wanted to be a part of with Josh Harris, Adam Peters, and Dan Quinn a building here. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, especially the fact that Jeremy Chin had multiple teams trying to get him. And he chose us over those other teams and potentially for less money because I'm pretty sure somebody else out of all of those teams had to have offered them more than a one year up to $5.1 million deal at very max there's no way somebody else didn't offer him at least more than that i highly doubt it but even though again to go back to my main point he doesn't have any strong connections with the commanders you know that boy resh manual is gonna come with some crazy connections so buckle up because we have three. First of all new safety jeremy chin played in carolina under the defensive coordinator phil snow snow was in detroit with mayhew and lance newmark our now assistant gm that was one of the top front office members for the Detroit Lions for like the past 20 years. Snow was also Adam Peters' defensive coordinator at UCLA. That's a really random connection. Also, Jeremy Chen is connected to Commander's defensive passing game coordinator, Jason Simmons. So he's going to have a lot to do with the DBs. And I know that they're super happy to reunite with the Commanders. I know they can't wait to get back to working with each other because I'm sure that Jeremy Chen probably prefers to have a guy like Jason Simmons in his corner. And I know with the elite athleticism and ceiling and potential and talent that Jeremy Chen was just naturally born with, just God-given ability, basically. I know Jason Simmons can't wait to get his hands on a guy like him as well. So it's mutual also lastly shouts out the rest manual for this one as well this one's insane jeremy chin will be playing under commander's db coach tom donatel donatel's dad ed coached chin's uncle steve atwater in denver too random i don't know how rush manual does it bro nobody's better in the business at doing that than him i don't even know if any other fan base has a guy like rush manual if you're not following him for all of those random did you know facts you're missing out because it's absolutely ridiculous and i gotta always make sure i shout him out when i use any of his information in my videos man it's absolutely ridiculous but yeah man jordan schultz who's the one that broke this news about jeremy chin signing to the commanders also went on to add to that tweet he quote tweeted it and said jeremy chin had multiple offers but wanted to join dan quinn's defense after seeing his recent success with the cowboys and what did i tell y'all months ago weeks ago days ago the whole process i told y'all the washington commanders would be a top free agency destination that prediction i made is aging better and better with every free agency signing by the day I told y'all, and a lot of people doubted me, but I told y'all, players will actually want to play for the burgundy and gold and are even going to be willing to take less money to do it sometimes. I'm pretty sure Frankie Louvu had a better offer out there than that. I'm pretty sure. He was arguably, at worst, the second best linebacker available in free agency. And he came here on a very high value deal for us i wouldn't necessarily say it was cheap but he deserved way more money than what we're giving him and then jeremy chin to come here with that ridiculous amount of talent even though he hasn't necessarily produced as well as he should have but we're going to talk about injuries we're going to talk about 
the Carolina Panthers not putting them in the best situations to succeed. And I expect Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. to do a far better job than that. But either way, he hasn't been very productive. But still, $5 million for a guy like Jeremy Chin just now entering his prom? Come on, dog. This would have never happened under Dan Snyder. Because if Dan Snyder was still here, more than likely Adam Peters doesn't come here. And also, if Adam Peters isn't here and Dan Snyder is still here, we more than likely don't have Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. and all of those guys and Ken Norton Jr. to come here to be our linebackers coach Jason Simmons to be our defensive passing game coordinator it's very likely that not only most of those guys aren't here I would argue that none of those guys would be here if Dan Snyder was still here and again Jeremy Chen literally said I want to play for Dan Quinn there's a certain aura around this team right now Adam Peters got it in certain ways Dan Quinn has it in certain ways it's starting to pay dividends with the guys that we decided to bring in here man people are seeing the light Free agents around the NFL are looking around like, hey, man, I want to play there. Hopefully, Tyron Smith is thinking the same thing. But, man, the future is bright, y'all. Y'all can't tell me the future isn't bright. I told y'all we would be a top free agency landing spot, but people didn't want to listen. I hope the proof is in the pudding by not only the value of contracts that we're getting right now, but also the fact that we have the most free agency signers out of any NFL team right now. I, I hope the proof is in the pudding. I hope y'all believe me now. And I love the fact that Jeremy Chin was also willing to bet on himself and this coaching staff. I feel like that needs to be acknowledged and emphasized over and over again. Because by signing a cheap one-year prove-it deal that he's signing and then trying to get big money next offseason, he's basically betting on himself to go out there and dominate this season. I mean, he's on a one-year prove-it deal. If there were any time that Jeremy Chin would step up and play at a potential Pro Bowl, All-Pro level that he has naturally inside of him, it would be this year so i respect the mess out of that the fact that he's willing to bet on himself like that instead of just taking like a decent two or three year deal elsewhere or something like that and then also the fact that he's betting on dan quinn and joe witt jr that's a big compliment in itself because he's basically saying through action of signing with us for the deal that he did that he's putting his career in their hands and that he's basically depending on them to turn him into an elite safety get elite safety play out of him so that when he's up for his next contract in 2025 he can finally get the big payday that he was hoping to get since he was runner up for the defensive rookie of the year just a few years ago and man y'all don't understand man coming out of the draft i wanted jeremy chin so bad he was one of my favorite like top five at worst top 10 players out of that entire draft no matter what round you may potentially be looking at him i remember it man i was screaming please go get this guy at all costs he's a freak athlete with unlimited potential imagine what dan quinn and joe Wood jr can do with an apex athlete like this i mean basically take j ron curse for what the cowboys had last year and then just give him every freakish athletic trait that you could possibly give him on top of what he already is i mean this guy had an elite 10.0 out of 10.0 raw athletic score from the RAS scoring guide from the combine, man. This guy had a vertical jump of 41, which was a 9.75 percentile, a broad jump of 11.06, which was a 9.97 percentile. And then, I mean, you got to remember, he's six foot three and 221 coming out of the draft. He also benched 20 which was an 8.83 percentile for safeties. Then he ran a 4.45 40-yard dash, which was a 9.22 percentile, and then a 2.58 20-yard split and a 1.5 10-yard split, all elite. I mean, again, a 10 out of 10 athlete, according to his raw athletic score from the 2020 scouting combine, man. When we're talking about just God given natural ability, that guy is one of the top guys that you're talking about. He's arguably one of the most athletic players, not only out of all safeties in the NFL, but if we're just looking at the commander's team right now, even with all of the athletes we have everywhere, you could argue Jeremy Chin is the biggest freak athlete we have on roster as of just signing him a few minutes ago and it seems like it was a lifetime ago but like i just briefly mentioned earlier remember just a few years ago when he was a rookie there was a, a debate between chase young and jeremy chin for who should win defensive rookie of the year and then he ended up being the runner up when chase young ended up winning it so the talent is there we can't debate about the talent it's just about whether or not we can get that out of him more con importantly consistently 
And I know Frankie Lubu is happy, man. He gets a Panthers teammate to join him in Washington. So there's at least some chemistry and communication already set there. There's a certain floor that comes with that just alone from those guys playing together for the years that they played together in Carolina. And shouts out to JP Finley because I think this is a great point. The Jeremy Chin signing is interesting because his NFL career started shot out of a cannon, but then he faded the last two seasons as injuries piled up. And I also feel like we're going to talk about it soon that the Carolina Panthers just didn't use them correctly at all, man. But this guy went from rookie season 117 tackles rookie season 107 tackles in 2021 and then again the injury started hitting them that i felt like they didn't really use them correctly and then he had 70 tackles in 2022 and then only 30 tackles in 2023 but man i'm telling you the talent is there the potential is there i can't wait and that's where my boy tim mcgrath comes in you have an injury problem guess who's arguably one of the best in the business in fixing that problem my boy tim mcgrath who to me arguably is one of the most elite health and injury prevention geniuses out there doing it in the entire world this guy has experienced helping teams in multiple leagues and multiple countries all around the world helping prevent injuries and then when guys do happen to get hurt he develops a perfect individual plan for each every single person on how they can best return from injury not only 100 but as quickly as possible but most importantly 100 we're not trying to rush people back we're trying to bring them back at 100 as soon as possible he's arguably the best at doing that he literally has an entire company that specializes in that we gave him like a free like a test run like less than a year ago and he was helping advise us on injuries and then whatever he did within that less than a year they felt the need to promote him just a week ago like sometime during the combine to like a full blown full-time position for the commanders man and hey tim mcgrath this is your first real case study slash assignment right now get jeremy chin back to 100 percent and do whatever it takes to keep him healthy because when jeremy chin is healthy it's spooky season for offenses man it's really a scary sight man and then back to one of my points i was alluding to earlier i also feel like jeremy chin was criminally misused and underutilized by Igero Ivero last season He's definitely more of like a hybrid linebacker than anything else rather than keeping him as just a pure safety. I felt like that was not good on the Panthers side of things. I'm telling you. And shouts out to Grant Paulson because, again, with every signing, he comes and brings up some really interesting, like, general stats that you need to know. First of all, this guy's 26 years old, so you could argue he's possibly entering the prime of his career right now. Again, if Tim McGrath can keep him healthy, Dan Quinn and Joey Jr., I'm fully confident in them to be able to handle the rest. He's entering his fifth season. He spent all four of his first years in Carolina. Again, he was second to Chase in the 2020 Defensive Rookie of the Year. And then he had 100 tackles his first two seasons, like I already told y'all he missed 11 games the last two seasons that's not good and again he played with our recently signed linebacker Frankie Lubu again these are my two favorite signings also shouts out to John Com because I completely agree certainly does not look good for Cameron Curl's return right now at all have two young safeties to pair with Chin and Quan Martin and Derek Forrest. Chin has versatility, good near the line. Plus, you also have Percy Butler, who's pretty talented as well and went in the third round for a reason a few years ago. And also, shouts out to Sam 48 because I completely agree with this as well. This is another low-risk flyer on a young talent who's coming off of not his best year, but Jeremy Chin, 26 years old, has some experience playing in the box, playing in the slot, playing free safety, strong safety, whatever you need. And between the defensive depth and competition for this group of young players, we are definitely on the up and up right now, man. I'm telling you. And if I had to guess, if I had to like try to, uh, based off of what I've watched, just a little bit of tape I've just watched on him right before I started recording this video. And based on his measurables, his athletic profile, and where he was best at his first two years in the NFL versus what he was struggling with these past couple of years, I would predict that Quan Martin would be more of like your pure strong safety type of guy that maybe even even play slot corner for you and then Derek Forrest and Percy Butler are more like your rangy free safeties but honestly everybody that I've already named are all very versatile and can play multiple positions in the defensive back group and then you have Jeremy Chin that will probably out of those guys that I previously named including him will be around the line of scrimmage the most kind of like a star role 
but I'm pretty sure most of y'all know it as like a Buffalo nickel. He's more so a better fit to be a Buffalo nickel. So basically, no more Cameron Curl in my opinion, because I feel like Quan Martin steps into that Cameron Curl role from last year, and then Jeremy Chin takes over what Quan Martin was doing last year with him and Cameron Curl were on the field at the same time. So I highly doubt we also go and get Buffalo nickel from the Cowboys, J. Ron Curse. I was predicting that maybe we go and potentially get him in free agency now Jeremy Chin literally comes in and takes that exact role and then shouts out to Ben Standig from The Athletic because I also agree with this assessment the hybrid safety linebacker had over 100 tackles in his first two seasons and led the league with two defensive touchdowns as a rookie come on now that's the type of playmaker that Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. want so bad they want guys that force turnovers that create havoc plays that change games on the defensive side of the ball to score touchdowns to get takeaways all of that then injuries curtailed chin's recent production and the 2020 second rounder was a poor fit in carolina scheme last season whatever scheme they switched to jeremy chin just did, simply did not fit in it for some reason they just decided forget jeremy chin we're gonna just do what we want to do instead of building a defense that gets the most out of him and we're just gonna see if it works and it didn't work and there's a quote that comes up from Mueller himself, don't be discouraged by the lack of numbers. Chin can run, tackle, and close in coverage. He has the range of a free safety, but hits like a will backer. He injured his quad and started only eight games in 2023. The runner up for defensive rookie of the year in 2020 is a better player than the numbers show. I completely agree. Well, wholeheartedly, 100%. This guy has so much untapped potential. Again, if I had to put money, on anybody that we've signed so far in this free agency class that if they're able to stay healthy that could potentially be a pro bowl all pro player literally number one on my list is jeremy chin and frankie louvu is probably second and then from there we can start to debate everybody else and that's why those are my two favorite signings because they definitely have the highest ceilings but i also agree with air raid concepts here chin isn't limited to simple box responsibilities but that is where he thrives i think about keanu neal and his fit with dan quinn a top down safety that'll plug into linebacker in certain packages cheap they'll have a plan for him and i wouldn't rule out another safety because again jeremy chin is more of like a hybrid linebacker star or what you want to call it a buffalo nickel i, I expect Quan martin to be like a strong safety as well but i expect him to move all around the place play in the slot play everywhere and then again Derek forrest and percy butler are also very versatile in their own right but i expect them to be more like free safety so don't be surprised that if we don't go and get like another safety even though i wouldn't expect it to be like a top free agency signing like a justin simmons that's out there but don't be surprised if we go safe earlier in the draft than we probably expect or maybe like a decent veteran type of guy that at least raises the floor of our safety group that went in doubt of jeremy chin still struggling to learn the scheme or if he's injured for some reason we have a guy that we can depend on type of thing a type of backup plan and sticking with the theme of versatility going back to my point that we have so many versatile guys in our secondary just in that young secondary alone but also frankie louvu is extremely versatile now you add jeremy chin we just added dorance armstrong jamin davis is already really versatile and they want him to start to play a more michael parsons like role where he's rushing the passer more Quan martin can literally play anywhere in the secondary except for i guess outside corner and then again Derek forrest and percy butler man wherever you want them to do in the secondary even though i prefer them at free safety i mean the versatility in this defense alone is scary and dan quinn along with joe witt jr having a strong history of being some of the most creative defensive minds out there in the entire nfl this is scary news for the rest of the division i'm not gonna lie the previous regime depended on elite talent to make elite plays this coaching staff is the complete antithesis to that they'll put everybody in the best situations to win as often as possible which is the reason that jeremy chin wanted to come here which is the reason frankie louvu wanted to come here in spite of other teams giving them both offers that was the reason that Michael Parsons said that he'll miss Dan Quinn because he said that he felt like those guys put him in the position to succeed as much as possible. And even though he feels like he's a great talent in his own right, he felt like, as in Michael Parsons, felt like Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. did the best job of maximizing his talent. That's why Dorrance Armstrong Jr. also followed that coaching staff here. Dante Fowler as well. There's a reason these guys are following these guys, man. Again, this is the type of coaching staff that doesn't let the talent just do the talent. These guys 
guys do whatever they can to put no matter if you're good or bad they put you in the best situations to succeed as often as possible and to maximize what talents you do have and then on top of that adam peters has also done a great job so far this free agency period to get them even more talent than even the talent dependent previous regime had so it's basically like the best of both worlds not only did the commanders improve in talent based from looking at compared to last season but also they improved mightily in coaching so it's literally the best of both worlds and this is the type of coaching staff that even if we had the same exact talent as last year like if you just copy and pasted our defense from last year going to this year i would expect them to play better just simply because of the coaching staff changes i'm super excited man and everybody around emmanuel forbes being better most notably the pass rush in front of him potentially being better is only going to make emmanuel forbes play better so that's going to increase the production and talent that we have already on this roster before these guys even got here i'm super excited but also let's go back to jeremy chin real quick and look at some pro football focused stuff because last year again panthers defense was awful for jeremy chin he didn't fit in that defense at all they didn't even try to maximize his talent they were just like hey this is the defense we're running you either get with it to get lost and that boy said all right when it's off season time free agency time i'm lost i'm out of there but still last year he had a 57.7 grade but a 68.1 run defense grade that's really good right there that's still pretty good pass rush grade of 58.4 and a coverage grade of 51.6 and that's how you know they didn't use them correctly because jeremy chin with that freakish athleticism and instincts having a 51.6 grade that defense was terrible for him shame on the panthers for that one man the panthers did a great job of utilizing frankie luvu but for some reason jeremy chin was just completely ignored when they set that defense up and then when you're looking at his past grades he had a 54.9 in 2022 which is actually even worse than last year but going back to 2021 he had a 71.4 grade and if you compare 2021 jeremy chin with that 71.4 overall grade if you're comparing that to safeties from last year in, in the 2023 season that would have been a better grade than talanoa hafanga better than grant delpit better than andre cisco harrison smith deshaun elliott jimmy ward julian blackman jordan whitehead Kayvon wallace justin simmons tashawn gibson senior armani hooker jordan poyer jordan fuller jaquan brisker and even more specifically to us cameron curl so if you can get 2021 jeremy chin at worst out of him you arguably get at least a top 20 something safety in the nfl which is incredible man i'm telling you with this coaching staff i'm thinking we're definitely going to get closer to his ceiling than his floor if this were ron rivera and jack DeRio, martin mayhew and those guys of the previous regime i would still be very excited about this signing because i just believe in his potential and talent that much but the fact that it's this coaching staff this front office i definitely truly believe we're going to get closer to his ceiling of a potential pro bowl all pro player than the inconsistent player that he's been the past couple of seasons for the panthers but dog man before we get up out of here i do want to talk about the fact that we are going crazy in free agency right now this brings our total number of free agency signings by adam peters to now 12 which is the most in the nfl and we're also not overpaying for anybody i feel like that needs to be emphasized not a single person we've signed was an overpay excellent value all around and some people have arguably been steals man and that shouts out the craig hoffman for this one because he said jeremy chin is yet another high upside guy for the commanders he's the defensive version of eckler to me five million dollars for a super high upside guy who has an injury history but no long-term commitment sign me up and i almost agree with that but the problem is though i feel like craig hoffman is forgetting the fact that jeremy chin is still just beginning to hit his prime at 26 years old whereas austin eckler is probably either in the middle of his prime or probably in the tail end of it because 29 is pretty old for a running back but 26 is young for a safety now i agree with some of his points but i also want to add the fact that jeremy chin is completely different from austin eckler because this is a guy that you hope to be you're starting whatever you want to call them chess piece linebacker star position buffalo nickel safety free safety strong safety whatever slot corner whatever you need them the tight end coverer anything you hope he's that guy for you but i mean hopefully projected the next five to eight years i would love whereas austin eckler i don't expect him to be around that long but it would be lovely but i highly doubt it and now when you're really looking at how much we're rebuilding this roster and 
technically recalibrating according to Dan Quinn and I'm definitely seeing the vision now it doesn't feel like a rebuild it doesn't feel like we're starting all the way over to the point that we're about to go out there and only win like four or five games next year I think we're truly going to be able to compete but it's all dependent on who we go out there with starting quarterback of course and how much this coaching staff is able to actually develop these guys I have full faith and optimism that they can but either way it's starting to look like this through this recalibration we're only going to have like three or four starters on the defensive side of the ball from last season. And that's crazy, man. I didn't expect them to come in here and overhaul that roster that quickly, man. That I mean, whoo, it's been smooth to upgrades all over the place. And shouts out to them because they're letting all of the contract expire and they didn't re-sign a single commander's free agent in this 2024 offseason, man. It's looking smarter and smarter by the day, too. I'm not going to lie. But even though it's not very likely, I would still like for them to potentially bring back like a Khalid Hudson or Cornelius Lucas for extremely cheap though that's just because I'm attached to those players and I think they could be good depth at the very least but we'll see but also shouts out to Breeze Butler for pointing this out they've already replaced half the players they were losing in free agency could argue nearly all projected upgrades not to mention the nine draft picks they still have at their disposal Peters and them folks are cooking right now I completely agree couldn't agree more I already felt like that before the Jeremy Chin signing and then for Jeremy Chin to come in and be my favorite signing after already the previous 11 were made is absolutely ridiculous in my eyes and also shouts out to Grant Paulson for pointing this out interesting that six of the commanders 12 new free agency contracts have been one-year deals feels like an indictment of what peters and newmark regime thought about this roster 23 percent of the roster added via free agency already six of those guys are on one off deals bringing in vets to fill holes hey man i completely agree and i love it also shouts out to tan top podcast for bringing up the point that now at this point offensive tackle and cornerback are obviously our biggest needs right now more specifically left tackle and i'm probably maybe if things calm down i'll finally sit down and do like a video about what are our top needs at this point remaining and who are the best options we can at filling those needs in both free agency and the draft so stay tuned for that i'm gonna work on that but then again you never know by the time i'm done with this video and then i do the video on us signing a long snapper we would have signed tyron smith and i would love for that to happen but boy i am tired and man i'm tired to eat man so that's the end of this video man i really appreciate y'all for supporting me and watching all my videos especially if you're those people out there that's watching every single one of these videos i'm putting out there i really appreciate y'all man make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one and oh yeah i'm tripping man shouts out to my boy brandon for donating to the cash app again since i'm not live streaming y'all are donating them between my videos so i promise to do the best that i can to shout y'all out the very next video after y'all donate so i gotta shout out my boy brandon and he said excited for the future rico we appreciate you man i appreciate you even more man i really do for the donations y'all don't understand how much that means to me that's why i take the time to shout out everybody that does a cash app donation since i'm not live streaming so i can't thank you immediately after you do it and everybody's there to see it live i gotta take some time to do that in my videos it's the least i could do to at least thank y'all in my videos but yeah man stay tuned again i'm coming out with every little piece of information that the commanders have going on and again if we ever just get things to calm down if we just ever go five hours without signing a free agent i can actually start to work on some of my more creative videos like our biggest needs and what are the best players that are still available out there in free agency and potentially in the draft that we can use to fill those needs i can start working on a mock draft based on what needs we still have after free agency so far i can start to do i want to do a video on like awards like who are our best signings so far who has the highest ceiling who's the best value who's the biggest sleeper who's the worst signing so far i want to do a video like that but we just keep signing guys i can't even stop to even think so hey man make sure y'all stay tuned i really appreciate y'all when i finally have time man i cannot wait um to start to work on all of these other videos and i also want to make sure i try to read and reply to as many comments as possible so stay patient with me but you can see i'm super busy also i want to make sure that y'all know that please reply in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this i can't believe i almost went the entire video without saying that let me know how you feel about this jeremy chin signing do you agree with me where this is at worst one of our two best signings this free agency period are you just as excited about him as me do you feel like dan 
Dan Quinn and Joey Jr. and Jason Simmons can finally unlock that potential that he had in them. Let me know all of that, of course, and I really appreciate y'all. And also let me know, do you feel like is this the end of the road for Cameron Crowe potentially re-signing with us or are we still potentially looking at safety like I mentioned earlier? Make sure, make sure you let me know about all of that. And of course, I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh.